the perfect fix. His drug of choice was C17 H21 NO4. My drug of choice was an A+. This addiction was genetically sequenced in my DNA from my father. Two sides of the same coin coexisted with the inherent need to satisfy the body's desire for a fix. While his fix was a white powder that jolted him into a world of euphoria and energy, mine was a rush of an A+, a fleeting high that fed my hunger for worth and validation. The first time I felt my craving for academic validation was in second grade. Anything less than a perfect score would unravel me, and receiving a grade below a 90% would send an irrational feeling throughout my entire body, making my chest tighten, eyes well up with tears, and my stomach turn in on itself. My teacher, Miss Benya, quickly learned to break any news of my test scores in the hallway, away from prying eyes while I learned to compose myself. These early signs were merely the precursor of what was to crescendo throughout my academic journey. Now, standing as the valedictorian of my class, which wasn't as much of a goal as it was a side effect, I chased the adrenaline before every test, for it meant my ribs felt as though they were closing, my eyes veiny and purple under, and my stomach feel as though it was tied in a knot, twisted with a desperate hunger for one more hit of perfection. I have sacrificed so much in my pursuit of this feeling. I chased the lows knowing that these sacrifices would lead to an exceeding high of praise, top grades, and a level of confidence I couldn't match with anything else. I became so enthralled by this cycle that isolation came with my decisions to skip important events, to study, and compelled myself to obtain every extra credit opportunity available. My self-worth became tightly bound by my academic success and the joy of learning faded into the background, replaced by my relentless drive to achieve, to be seen, to be validated. When I was little, my father struggled as a high-functioning addict, masking his addiction behind an exterior of normalcy. My mother, overwhelmed with the demands of caring for me and my sisters while facing the reality of his addiction, made the difficult decision to give him an ultimatum, either leave or stay and be better. In that moment of desperation, he chose to leave, a painful choice that left scars and shaped my understanding of love and responsibility. But like any addiction, there comes a crash, a moment of realization that the cycle is unsustainable. The exhaustion, anxiety, and constant feeling of not enough became overwhelming. It took my later high school years to understand that my need for validation reflected deeper insecurities, a desire to prove myself worthy of love and attention. Like my father's journey with addiction, I understood that I needed to find a healthier way to cope. Yet, despite his decisions, my father's journey took a turn for the better. He committed himself to rehabilitation and has been clean ever since. He came back a different man, a man I know today as my dad. He often reminds me that once an addict, you're always an addict. Every day requires a conscious decision not to revert to your past self. He once recalled, but there will be things in your life that are worth giving it all up for, and I couldn't give up my girls. My worth is not determined by the number one or an A plus on a piece of paper, but by who I am and what I bring to the world. I am learning the value of moderation and balance and that drive can still exist without condemning myself to live life by the rigid metrics of perfection, where every step is a calculation and every misstep feels like failure. Becoming involved in research has taught me that true progress often comes through trial and error. In research, there isn't always a clear path or an immediate answer. There will be 99 wrongs and one right. I have learned that each failure is not a reflection of my worth, but an opportunity to grow. Surrounding myself with supportive family, friends, mentors, and community has helped me find that balance.